Hey, it's Debbie, and I'm doing another shorty podcast to go over some information I was looking up to share with you on what is the proper human diet that Dr. Ken Berry talks about. What is nutritional ketosis? Do we need to be in it all the time? Do you need to be chasing ketones? These are some thoughts I've been going into, researching, and also for athletes as you are similar to me, doing endurance training, maybe racing. I used to race Ironmans, marathons, 50K trail runs. Cannot really do it anymore. And now I'm just trying to help you avoid going through what I went through, gosh, 10 years ago and really learning more about, are we fasting too much? Are we eating too little? Are we getting enough protein? And really matching your fueling with your training. And all this information we hear out there on social media and from other influencers, practitioners, doctors, the information you might hear about keto, carnivore, intermittent fasting, prolonged fasting are often recommendations for people that have metabolic issues, that have insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes that you can reverse with doing a carnivore keto carnivore, keto program and fasting helps healing. So when we are looking at what is best for you, the driven, ambitious, high-performing individual that's training a lot, and maybe you're already low weight, or maybe you're not, maybe you're struggling with unexplained symptoms. You can't figure out how to lose fat weight. You can't figure out how to improve your performance, get faster and stronger and improve how you age as over 50 we've got a challenge of the hormones going down and (laughs) improve the aging process so we can live simply ageless so here are some video screenshots i'm going to go into get rid of these pop-ups in here so let me share my screen so hopefully you're subscribing to my youtube channel low carb athlete to get these updates So if we go to Verda Health, Dr. Stephen Finney, Volok and Finney are the first people, doctors I started learning from about metabolic efficiency back in 2005, 2009, when I did USA triathlon course with a seminar with Bob Sebohor really opened my eyes. And he was talking about what I was thinking about. Do we need all these carbohydrates as endurance athletes? So I looked up some information you might be curious about. What is nutritional ketosis? So let me get rid of these things. So Dr. Finney and the team at Verta, nutritional ketosis is a natural metabolic state in which your body is fueled by mainly fat and ketones. Instead of carbohydrates, glucose. Nutritional ketosis happens when carbohydrate consumption goes low enough that a person's liver can convert adipose tissue and dietary fats into fatty acid known as ketones, then burn ketones for energy. Carbohydrates are an energy source, but they are not the only one to be used by your body. When there is little carbohydrate in your di- in your diet, your body has a natural and readily available option nutritional ketosis. And it will use fat, the fat that's in the foods you eat as well as stored in your body. So we can go back into frequently asked questions. Type 2 diabetes is what they work on. So it's going to be different. So you can look up Dr. Stephen Finney and Volok and Finney have done lots of research early on for athletes doing low carb and working on improving performance. So what is nutritional ketosis? As I just said, how do you get into nutritional ketosis? That's when dietary carbohydrates are reduced around 50 grams a day from the non-athlete and the body's production of ketone increases to maintain a blood level of 0.5 millimoles. So you can read more if you want to know more on that. So Do you need to be in nutritional ketosis if you don't have insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes and other metabolic issues? That's a great question we need to look at with you as an individual. So The Art and Science of Low-Carb Performance is one of my favorite books, and you can look that up. Nutritional ketosis, remember, is might be less than 50 grams a day, but if you're an athlete and working out, 
you can probably tolerate, as Dr. Dan Plew says, around 100, 130 grams, up to 200, up to 300 grams for some high-performing athletes of carbohydrates, if you wish. But it's strategic carb timing, so those carbs are used as your quick energy if you're doing a high-intensity interval training workout or doing a race that your high heart rates. And we go back into looking at our zones that we find when we do metabolic efficiency testing as with Pinoe that I conduct here in North San Diego. So with Dr. Finney, when you restrict carbs below 50 grams and a moderate amount of protein, I don't know, this is all changing now because people are going keto carnivore that it's higher protein, say 20 to 30% protein. And then your fat is 60 to 80%. It is normal to have ketones 0.5 to 3.0, that every person's ability to get nutritional ketosis is different. Some people will see increased ketone levels a few days after restricting carbs, while others take one to two weeks to start to show ketones. And if they're on medication for diabetes, because this is their target audience, the insulin resistance, the type two diabetic, this is helpful to work on with a ketogenic diet expert to help you through the process as we did in a previous video. Once your body achieves level level of nutritional ketosis range, you begin a process called keto adaptation. The first few weeks of this process, you may find the exercise endurance is limited, but typically resolves after three to six weeks. So if you watch the video I just posted, it was about being fat adapted for an athlete, how to transition based on Dr. Dan Plew's information at Endure IQ. So over the time, the body processes are fine-tuned to three months to achieve all the benefits of ketones as a clean, burning, and efficient fuel. This is talked about in the article, Keto Adaptation. So you can look up all this information, but remember, it depends what illnesses, diseases you have. So Volok and Finney really go into it and they're the only ones I learned from early on how it impacts your performance as endurance athlete. So just to continue on some clues about human metabolism, we want to get met flexibility of switching from fat to carbs and back to fat instead of most people are just carb metabolizers and don't have the ability to switch that switch. So we want to look at the history of what your ancestors ate and did. And I'm going to show you my DNA report coming up and then my wheat zoomer report, why I avoid wheat and items that might seem to the body as wheat, not just gluten. Okay. So check this out, but great information from Bullock and Finney always on the research. And they have a zillion YouTube videos that are on under endurance athletes and low carb performance and ketogenic diet. So you have to remember, are they talking for the athlete or are they talking to someone with metabolic illness? So a ketogenic diet puts you in state of nutritional ketosis. It may take a while. So what you want to look at all how it happens in your body in this article, serum uric acid biomarker for keto adaptation, moderate protein ketogenic diet for 12 weeks. So you can look at all their research over time at Verta Health. So good research and you can depend on Dr. Volick. So interesting thing here, does keto adaptation increase mitochondria density? Hmm. Good article to read. We won't go into that now, but you can look up vertahealth.com slash blog slash keto adapted. So keto adaptation is a complex of changes in varying timelines. To be sure, the article says, when someone initiates a well-formulated ketogenic diet, a number of changes are set in motion may occur in parallel with widely varying rates of completion. These may include a prompt increase in ketogenesis resulting in BOHB becoming available as a major cellular fuel for oxidative metabolism, particularly in the brain, heart, and skeletal muscle. Progressive adaptations in some tissues to prioritize fatty acid oxidation rather than ketones, as in skeletal muscle, allowing more ketones and less glucose to be used by the brain, and that therefore thus 
less need for gluconeogenesis from protein. I don't want to break down my protein. I'm fighting that loss of protein in my muscles. So a prompt reduction in ROS generation, oxidative stress, resulting in reduced target tissue damage, but with the time to with the time to a new steady state depending on turnover rate at the target tissue. And fine tuning of glycogen conservation and three carbon substrate scavenging, allowing muscle glycogen contents to return to normal based on research study by Volek in 2016. Also reduced inflammatory mediators resulting in downregulation of NLRP3 inflammation and reduced isoprostine generation based on their other research studies and lastly improved power to weight ratio with body fat loss and improved body composition. So great information, more goes on, but bottom line, they say keto adaptation will likely be defined as the net effect of many parallel responses to a well-formulated ketogenic diet with these various responses occurring on different timelines and differing degrees across individual phenotypes and genotypes. These may, many variables aside, however, the timeline for full keto adaptation will likely be measured in months rather than days or weeks. So check out that. So much information. I'd love to have you go back and read about the mitochondria density. So leave that there for you to read when you have time. Then we go to an article by the diet doctor. What is ketosis? Weight loss, health benefits, ketosis versus ketoacidosis. How to get in ketosis, protein, blah, blah, blah. So you can look up dietdoctor.com slash low carb ketosis. Ketosis is a metabolic state which your body uses fat as a main energy source. The body normally uses glucose as its primary fuel when the carbon intake is low and your liver produces lots of ketones, which are like fat-like compounds when your brain and other organs can use in place of glucose. Being in ketosis may help you feel less hungry, promote weight loss, and provide other benefits. And you know the rest. But this goes into a little bit more detailed of what is ketosis and how it works. And so you can dive into that on the diet doctor. So from here, I want to go into the proper human diet. So let's move that guy over. And then we're going to go into the DNA report. So I went into this in the other recent podcast with Dr. Ken Berry was on the show a couple of years ago, but proper human diet, the food, drink resources you need to reach your fat loss goals. So this is great free resource. You can get on Dr. Ken Berry's website and you can just look at all the meat, seafood you can eat, watch out certain foods, what vegetables are good, what vegetables you should limit. But I think this is for athletes. You are okay having those. If you do a hard workout dairy, a lot of people can't do cow dairy. So switching to full fat, but also raw goat, sheep cheese, but heavy whipping cream, heavy cream, and watch out for the fat-free stuff. So good list on here that Mm -hmm. you should look out for. Dairy is often inflammatory for some people. So test it. Okay. So you can go on to hear fats and oils, what to have. So it gives you more list, beverages and drinks, fruits in season, what to limit or what to avoid, nuts and seeds if you're not irritating your gut, sweeteners. As I said before, I'm not a fan of any of these. <laughs> I'd rather you have, I'm finding monk fruit, stevia, xylitol, allulose. I'd rather s- skip swerve and erythritol and just have some honey or coconut sugar instead of these other ones that get to be just chemicals. I feel like they don't taste the same. Real salts. Spices, all that are great. So you eat that. You can look up Dr. Ken Berry's YouTube channel, his Instagram, Twitter, but mostly you can get a ton of information on their YouTube channel. So what he suggests is more of a a carnivore-based diet. If you're healing, if you have inflammation, but you're working on more of a keto carnivore that you can eat all this food that feels good for you, but focusing on more of an animal-based diet, getting your healthy fats and protein from the animal products. And 
you can do intermittent fasting. He does a 16 hour to 18 hour overnight fast and then eating in that time restricted feeding window, six to eight hours for athletes. We're finding that's too short a time to hit those macro goals of protein and look at doing a 12 to 15 hour fast. 12 hours should be normal for you. And then once in a while, add in a little longer fast on your zone two or rest day workout sessions. Okay. So I wanted to touch on that. And then what I really like clients to do is this DNA company, I think is off really cool. So when you get the reports, you can see all these different things, but it is pulled up my profile for my carbohydrates. So this is where it depends on your body's ability to metabolize carbs. How much is your carb tolerance point? And then what foods are best for you? I know I've shared that if I have say breads, scones, muffins, yeah, they're yummy, but I can, they don't fill me up. So I would overeat and in college, I used to live off the bagelry bagel place in, in Bellingham where I went to Western Washington university and I could live off of bagels and that's all I ate. So I swear I got more carb insensitive because that's all I ate because it was fat free and no protein. And that's what we thought back then in the early nineties, when I was in college, carbs were free, right? So I lived off of, off of bagels. And so that would cause me to overeat and get too many calories and not get enough of the right foods. So carbohydrate diet, does it work for me? A lower carbohydrate diet, higher protein and fat works best for me. Now, if you look at my slides or the picture here on the YouTube channel video, the DNA company, you can use our discount code, low carb athlete to save on your report, but check out this reduced carb diet. I'm likely to be a candidate for diet that integrates reduced levels of starchy carbs like rice, pasta, breads, ensure fiber, no more than 25% of carbon take from starches, no less than 75% from fruit, vegetables, and other fibers on my report. So the other genes, it gives you a yellow or a red or green, but the influence associated with between high starches and weight gain, I carry moderate association between diet high in starches and weight gain. Another genetic SNP for a suboptimal insulin sensitivity profile, increased likelihood to develop hyperglycemia, elevated blood sugar. And that would be, especially if I did a, a diet high in starches. So I need to avoid processed and added sugars in general, moderate fruit consumption, keep fruit consumption during the day to avoid glucose spikes at night, which can contribute to metabolic dysfunction. So this is why me as an individual needs to be lower carb. It's not because it's trendy. I'm not doing keto carnivore strict. I'm listening to my body and I cannot tolerate carbohydrates that are refined. So also gives genetic, if I had influences to lactose based products, so lactase tolerance, but then here's red beep, beep, beep. Here we go gluten sensitivity gene results, influence likelihood of celiac or non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Red, I'm more likely to be gluten sensitive and will respond strongly to the presence of gluten in your diet. You do not, however, carry suboptimal variations of the gene with celiac. So I'm more non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Super interesting, right? So I know that because I'll show you the next report. I did a vibrant wellness Zoomer panel, wheat Zoomer, so we'll go into that sec, but that's the recommendations. You'll get this cool report of nutrition, but you can go back to my reports and they have all sorts of different ones. You can get when you do report system summary, behavioral carbohydrates, dietary fats, your microbiome, micronutrients, combined reports. So videos and there's more of them. That, that's just under nutrition. So you get all sorts of information on here. And again, it's optimal, suboptimal, normal, and poor. So you want to really look at, oh, this is probably why I have so many issues. I'm more sensitive on higher maintenance. So red is I carry suboptimal profile, the genes that influence microbiome. I'm probably more likely of a weakened, more susceptible microbiome profile. I need to focus on protecting my microbiome through nutrition, lifestyle, and environmental infant interventions. So that gives me clues of why I might have to do lab testing more often. I'm, I need to check on 
hey, I need some more glutathione than other people. I need to take some probiotics, make that super gut yogurt I was making. So really interesting how to work on your nutrition, your lifestyle habits, all this on these reports. So when you do the saliva test, you send it back to the DNA company and I did two podcasts with them, but you can head back and you'll get your results and you can work with your coach or I have my clients do this and I work with them, but check out the hormones, fitness, sleep, diet, nutrition, anti-inflammatory, cardiovascular longevity. So I really like this information because then we can take this, go, Hey, here's my rest and recovery fitness. If I combine this with my Pinoe metabolic testing with your lab test, what does this tell you how you should train? Best time to work out, male, females, information, the follicular luteal phase training, and then lifestyle recommendations. So you can check out all that based on your genetic test and learn more. Okay. So then when I'm working with clients, I often suggest them to do a Zoomer, Vibrant America, Vibrant Wellness. They do a Zoomer panel and we Zoomer will tell you some information. So here's my screen. Here's my score. Wheat Zoomer score 5.7 high end of the chart. Leaky gut score, intestinal permeability score. I'm in the red. This was two years ago. So what was positive? My IgG is more systemic. IgA is in your gut. Positive, all these different markers. So you can see positive and moderate amounts and negative. So non-celiac gluten sensitivity. What's interesting of these different wheat panel, the amylase protease inhibitors and the glutamorphine. So think of the word morphine drug. So if I have been eating a lot of croissants and bread and scones and high wheat items, when I take those, I, I might have more withdrawal symptoms with this glutamorphine. So we look at that. I look at that as a health coach, FDM practitioner with my clients and work on the nutritional therapy but you can see if you test for celiac, I just had two clients that ended up being celiac and IP panel, you can see my numbers are elevated, but I just had other people there way higher than that. So you can be all over. And then the wheat germ panel, the gliadin panel, super high risk, the alpha gliadin. So we take all this information and at the end of the report, it will tell us kind of a little bit more of what that means. So this is why I say test and not guess, because I'd have no idea that my head hurts after certain foods. I get a headache in five seconds. Why that is, if I, I don't necessarily have gut issues, I don't have bloated belly gas indigestion. I have more skin issues. I might have inability to lose weight is a struggle. And also my headache and my headache, think brain health. And I think my future in that gives me motivation to avoid all sources of wheat. So what's interesting here, you can see what is gluten. It's the protein found in wheat, rye, barley, and trichale, whatever that is, it acts as glue to give your grains a doughy texture, a soft and a food additive thickener. So look at what is in gluten. It's not just wheat, but rye products, seasoning blends, sauces, soy sauce, marinade, soup. So when I was on the cruise ship last, well, a few weeks ago, I avoided all sauces because every sauce has wheat added to it. Pretty much a soy sauce, teriyaki sauce, energy bars, trail mix, wheat grasses. I can't do athletic greens because it has wheat grass in it. So if you have issues with wheat, that means to avoid wheat grass, cereals, oats, unless they're certified gluten-free breaded food, meatballs, meatballs always have bread in them. So unless you make them yourself, it's going to have wheat imitation, crab, deli meat, and then medications, skincare products, it's everywhere. So you want to look at foods that are naturally gluten-free on this list. Of course, that's why we come back to more of a keto carnivore diet because animal proteins, beef, chicken, pork, fish, unprocessed meat, and unpasteurized dairy, raw dairy, they're not going to have wheat in it. They're naturally gluten-free. And again, we go back to looking at oxalates, phytates, FODMAPs, all this stuff. You go back to more of a, a carnivore diet to help people heal. So that's gluten-free, but I just want to share my report and that what all that means. So when we get the report back, we go through 
your Zoomers and just look at what that means and the research on it, what is gluten and other risks. Okay, so leaky gut repair, glutamine, arginine, omega-3, and looking at what to do besides just avoiding wheat, we need to heal, remove it, and then heal the gut. So doing the right protocol to help heal your gut and seal it up so you don't have inflammation in the rest of your body. So anyways, that's my wheat zoomer. That's what I do with clients too. And then we go back to when I'm doing Pinoy metabolic testing. This is where we can look at Pinoy is the VO2 max test. We're looking at your peak fat burn, your metabolic crossover point, your obviously oxygen consumption versus carbon dioxide, but we're looking at the training zone. So metabolic testing to help figure out your VO2 max, as I said, but your peak anaerobic threshold, your peak VT2 is where during VO2 testing, your body switches from aerobic to anaerobic metabolism. So it's VT2 and then VT1 is measured through VO2 max testing, the point of where exercise, where ventilation increases faster than carbon up, than oxygen uptake. So we look at those numbers. And then we look at, you can see on the chart here, this is a blog from Pinoy on performance, a well-rounded individualized exercise program importance of testing. So training zones, I've done a few podcasts on this lately. So look at zone one, what is zone two, aerobic base training? What is zone three, more tempo? Zone four, anaerobic threshold, and zone five, more anaerobic, more your sprints, short intensity interval training. And again, I keep saying this, but zone four, five workouts are only intervals if you come down to zone one completely before you come back up. So we want to test your functional labs as a wheat zoomer, a GI test, do pin up. Pinoy metabolic testing, figuring out what you should do for strength training versus cardio training and how much interval training. So that's what we can tell in a fitness test. Combine that with your functional lab testing to create the most personalized program. So super cool. And I'm excited to be doing this, but do you need more short interval trainings or medium training or long interval training? So do you need the you know, 20, 30 seconds up to minute intervals, 10 times, or do you need a one to four minute interval training, or do you need a four to 10 minute or 20 minute piece tempo? So that's going to be how we find what your areas of opportunity are and figure out what that is for you. So head to the websites, Verta Health, Diet Doctor gives some information, Dr. Ken Berry, DNA company can save on your report with low carb athlete code, Wheat Zoomer doing labs. That's what I do for my job is I offer different metabolic testing packages. So hopefully that helps you figure out what's your why, what you should do and how you can improve the aging process, improve your performance level and figure out how to get started on your training program, learning how to fuel properly, for your bioindividuality, for your workout load, your stress load in your life. So we work on what you eat, how you eat, when, why, but also how should you train? How should you recover? What are supplements you should take? And how can you improve your sleep, get more deep sleep? What's your heart rate variability? How can we make things better so you can live simply ages, right? So head to debbiepotts.net, set up a call with me if you want to learn more free resources on the website to get those eBooks and then hit subscribe here on YouTube channel to get into more of these videos. I'll be doing weekly talk soon. Thanks for listening and watching.